What's up everybody, I'm going to give you the rundown on how to actually earn steady income as a filmmaker and answer the question, how much money can an average indie filmmaker actually earn? And stick around until the end of the video because I'll also give you some insights on how, as a creator, you can stand up from the crowd and make five to six figures per, proje per project producing or directing feature films. Uh, so, I'm Lord Max. I'm a best-selling author, film producer, and owner of Hoven Crow Entertainment. I showcase how to make money doing what I do, which is with creator-owned comics and independent feature films as a side hustle. <laughs> I don't do it full-time yet. Um, so, uh, let's just go right into it. The producing and selling feature films. So, the key concept, uh, I'm talking about producing indie films and know that investing in movies is a long game that requires patience and a passion for movies indie movies don't make millions of dollars outliers do <laughs> and the 90 percent of them make thousands if anything at all over the course of multiple years um <laughs> so a another key takeaway is you need to make movies cheap you need to make them niche, and you need to learn how to distribute them worldwide. And I'm going to give you the specific rundown of how to do all that right now. So in a general sense, selling a film goes like this. There are literally hundreds of countries across the world. Duh. And each of them have multiple distributors, specific TV and streaming channels, or streaming platforms that are located there. Some are big platforms in multiple countries like Netflix, and others are little channels that only exist in their country. Then there's those that are in between. But they all specialize in specific regions and in specific genres. And you can consider each country its own distribution territory. However, some countries are so big that they're separated into different regional territories. Key thing, every channel and platform pays for content in some way, either up front or as a flat fee, through revenue sharing or a combination of both. Now, when I use the term distributors, I'm not talking about specific uh, or channels or platforms. Instead, I'm talking about the company that sells films to the specific platforms. For example, Gravitas Ventures is a distributor, and they in turn sell their films to specific platforms like Roku, Hulu, and Netflix, who are the platforms, or specific channels like Vudu or Zumo, who are streaming channels, and that can be found on multiple streaming platforms. Uh, not only that, but some channels have sub-channels. Um, so to back up, distributors like Lionsgate have relationships with specific channels and platforms around the world. So certain channels that showcase horror films and shows partner with distributors who specialize in acquiring quality horror content. Uh, so in today's reality, filmmakers don't always need to go through distributors. Instead, we can go directly to the platforms and channels either through cold emails or filmmaker platforms and aggregators and sales agents. Uh, in my experience, it's not common to get more than five-figure deals from one territory, although it does happen. It's not common in my experience because I'm not making that expensive of films um, but I also know from other people's experience that do make films for more expensive than mine they also don't get that many deals that are more than five figures if any oh, this is why I keep my costs low uh, from my experience and those in my film circles the most you can expect out of any one territory or platform is an average of like two hundred dollars 200 USD to maybe 20,000 USD for a no to low budget indie film, even with stars, regardless of the length of term. Uh, but if you guys have experienced otherwise, please let me know, because um, I would definitely like to learn from you. Uh, some territories and channels do pay up to five to six figures for high quality material with a star, um, but even those films won't consistently sell that high across all territories. You're lucky to make that with like one exclusive global deal with a mainstream platform. Uh, I, if I don't go through it later, uh, 
if you don't know what the difference is between exclusive and non-exclusive, I won't go into it but uh, in too much detail. But exclusive is like that's the only platform you're going to sell to, so you have no other opportunities to go anywhere else in that territory. So what you get from them is the most you'll get in that territory. Whereas non-exclusive, they're going to go a lot less because you can sell it to other people. Um, so what your best case scenario is that you get like five countries with really high exclusive um, deals where you only your film is only on their platform in that territory, which that is actually how I've been successful thus far. Is like I've gotten a few great exclusive ones in relatively small territories. And I thought like, oh man, if I could just do this in other countries, I'm just zooming. But it doesn't always work that way. So a more realistic way to earn profit from indie films look like this. You pay 500 bucks to throw a premiere at your local theater selling out with 200 people averaging 15 bucks a ticket. That's 2,500 profit. If you manage to throw an after party and sell those, t those tickets at a higher price, you can maybe double that. You make a deal with one platform for it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm running down like, here's like a, a fictional but kind of typical scenario you go through of how are you actually going to make money on your film. It's as if you do all these things I'm saying. So it's like the first step is you throw a premiere and you make profit off that premiere. The next step is something like you make a deal with one platform for an exclusive deal in two small countries, and they offer, let's say, 3K for a flat fee, three-year license. Then you make a deal with another platform, let's say, in like two East Asian countries for a two-year deal that's like $800 for each, uh, for each of them, for a total of $1,600. Then you make another deal with an African distributor, and then... That one's not up front. That's where you split revenue. And let's just say you maybe make another couple grand with that. Um, then you make an exclusive offer with a TV channel and another, ter like the, another territory like the UK or Europe. And that one's for longer, so you make more. So that one's for a total of five years, and you make 8K. Then you partner with a platform like Film Hub for a non-exclusive deal with all digital channels across North America and split the avenue, which let's just say earns back 10k after three years. Then you post your film on YouTube in your non-exclusive territories and maybe you can earn back like another grand after a few years. Then you sell DVDs at cons or horror cons and art conventions and multimedia or is that even a thing anymore? Or media conventions? And maybe you'll earn like three figures doing that um, at each one you go to. But that can all in all, you do all those step by step. After a couple years, you probably could double your film. Like you could maybe make, you know, 30K off of a $15,000 movie. Or you can make 20K off of a $10,000 movie. Or... Uh, you could end up like almost making a uh, hundred off of a fifty thousand dollar movie if you really play your cards right and do everything well. Um, but honestly, if you're going more than fifty, it's you're probably not going to break even, especially if you don't have star power or it's just something that's like so original and outlandish that it just catches everybody's attention. Like what? Um, it's got to be really unique. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, this is why you want to keep your costs low because usually distributors only pay for star power or if you can get some kind of virality, um, that makes a lot from ad revenue. That, that's something I don't go into, but that's unfortunately seems to be like the real ticket is when you can have something go viral. The secrets to that, some people have techniques, but they're not guaranteed. Um, if you have a lot of people watch your film, um, or if it placed in a major festival, uh, then you can start to look at like tripling your investment. 
if you have a star and it goes viral and it was at a festival, uh, then you can, then you're in a whole nother level, uh, a whole different scenario. But this is why films made for like a hundred to million dollar, a hundred k to a million dollars or more can make a profit, um, because the big distributors they can make those bigger deals. Um, and then they'll pay to promote the films, and then they'll pay to get the films on the front page of streaming channels, and they'll pay for billboards and TV ads, and they'll pay f- to get them into theaters and all that because they know they already know they have a hit. Anyway, so let's go into the nitty gritty of, of how do you submit to distributors and get your film in front of an audience uh, and actually get paid. So I went over the broad stuff. So what are the the actual like websites to go to the big ones if you don't already know it's like one is a big one is called film hub uh, and that you can it all you basically do is you upload your film and it gets it onto streaming platforms they basically they they send it to i guess you could say they pitch it i'm not sure if they like physically pitch it or just send it in like a catalog or something and then those Streaming platforms can then pick it up and put it on their platform, and then you get, much like YouTube or anything else, you get um, ad revenue for uh, every time it's played. Or if it's not ads, it's a, a cut of subscriptions or something like that. Excuse me. Uh, the second one is called Voller.com. That's V U U L R.com. To connect with distributors worldwide, find specific territories and niche distributors who will offer upfront minimum guarantees. Um, it does happen. So this is, I have used this multiple times on all my films. Um, I don't have that much of a catalog. So this is really good if you have like a huge catalog and you can make big kind of package deals. But it. It's a relatively new site. I want to say I started using it like three years ago. Maybe not even that long ago. Um, And since then, it's like grown a lot. And you can do a lot more. So as of now, you can upload your film. And and then you can, much like uh, other websites, like screenwriting websites, where it's like you upload your screenplay and then you can see... What do producers, what are they looking for? And then you can, if they say, I'm looking for a, a contained thriller, and you have a contained thriller, and you upload it. It's the same on here, where it's like, instead of a script, it's your full film. And you upload it, and you categorize it in its category. It's got this amount, it's got the, the these stars, your all your posters. It's like everything they would need, almost everything except for the actual deliverables or uploaded the genres all the all the specs that they'd want to know are up there and it like goes on a catalog and then you can see who is looking for sci-fi or horror or comedies and then you can submit to them and with a link to your film in the catalog and say i have what you're looking for and then they respond back with great the um the downside is not with the site but in just in general is uh, although it, it is mostly worldwide and uh so for those that make um, american films there's a lot of people almost everywhere in the world is looking for english speaking films and my films are mostly spoken in hindi so uh without the audio in english i lose out on a ton of people that really only accept movies that are spoken in English. I, there's also a lot of them will accept subtitles, but I lose out on a lot too because mine aren't dubbed. The actual audio itself isn't in English. But it's crazy how many people, despite the country, they all want them in English. So if you, that might be a, a pointer there. Is like if you're in another country, it might be worth, especially if you're already spending a good amount on the film, make sure you get it dubbed in English. My films are so low to get them dubbed in English is still quite a bit to where it might not be worth it, you know. It, to to spend another five grand to make it a high quality on post, I might not make that five grand back. That might be something I'll still do in the future, but just saying. 
Another thing you can do is upload high concept, low budget films to YouTube to earn ad revenue. You can cold email with IMDb Pro and just do a simple Google search and reach out directly distri to distributors. You can hire film reps and sales agents to do everything for you. These can be found through a search engine or by searching on IMDb Pro. You can just simply go to the films within the genre your film is in and in the same budget range, then look to see if the film had a sales agent. Or sales agent and producers and... Uh, um, Um, many sales agents and, uh, uh, and producers representatives are credited in the films as executive producers. So you'd have to actually kind of do some sleuthing on actually finding out who the sales agents are, is, uh, who the sales agents are, cause they're not always credited as that, um, in the, on the internet. You can also go through aggregators who can pinch your, pitch your film to large platforms for free. Examples of this include Quiver Digital, Premiere Digital, Bitmax, and Juice Worldwide. I've never used any of those. <laughs> so if, if somebody has and you're like, oh man, you shouldn't have mentioned those, uh, let me know. They might not actually be that great. Those are just ones that I've um, they have come across throughout over the years. You can also, like I was saying earlier, what we call four walling. That's where you use your film as an excuse to sell tiered tickets to like a premiere and then a party or an exclusive event. You can also sell comic books from your script or film. That's another business avenue I know quite a bit about. Um, you can also crowdfund your film on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or Seed and Spark. You can also, um, and whenever you crowdfund, you if you, you can also you don't always have to start from zero. Your film could be close to done, and you can still crowdfund for the post production or, or marketing or something like that. Um, in fact, sometimes it's a lot easier to get across the finish line if people have more to see, like a fully finished film. Um, find out how you're going to earn income. Come up with realistic numbers. Reach out to investors. Investors are everywhere, and they are not other filmmakers or comic creators. They're neighbors, old friends, dentists, doctors, family friends, seed investors, VCs. If you happen to know a VC in your neighborhood. Um, but to be honest, uh, you're going to need to have... You have to treat your film like it is a business because it is, and you have to take it seriously. And in order for people to take you serious about giving you a lot of money, you have to pretend you, you don't pretend, but treat it as something that's worth. If you if you need a million dollars, take that into consideration whenever you're asking for it. Like what I have is worth a million dollars. Uh. I don't have, you know, it or it will be down the line if I can, you know, it's just like any other investment. It's like a house. Uh, you're going to need to have the house. If you don't have the house built yet, you need to show people why it's in the greatest neighborhood and why you can get things for cheap and make it worth it in the long run for them. Uh, um, that's the key to getting and money is people want to earn that money back. Um other than that, you're just kind of rely on on people that are just in it for because they're down for the artistic cause or whatever. Like, hey, you know, he's trying. I gave him a little bit, <laughs> which, to be honest, that's how I've probably made most of mine. <laughs> anyway, uh, if any of that was helpful, like, subscribe, and do all whatever it is that you're supposed to do. Adios. You goons.